Welcome to Fort Lauderdale, where sun, sea, and sand all come together to create the ultimate coastal lifestyle. And if you're thinking about how great it would be to own a condo in Fort Lauderdale, well, you're in luck. The city has something for everyone, whether you're a first-time home buyer, an investor, a vacationer, or a luxury seeker. But why do people choose to buy condos in Fort Lauderdale? Here are seven reasons that we see and hear most often. It's no secret, Fort Lauderdale is a destination known for beaches, boating, and nightlife, making a super desirable place to live. Remember, as everybody says, the first rule of real estate is what? Location, location, location. And Fort Lauderdale certainly has a location, the location, and the location. So let's kind of start with the, the affordable condos, okay? So those, those are neighborhoods like Rassant Park, Flagler Village, Middle River, name a few. And what these really offer is they're a little bit older condos, or they're low-rise condos, okay? And they have prices that range from 100,000 to about 300,000. Now, many of these condos, they require some renovation or some upgrading, and they may have limited, limited amenities. However, they offer a great opportunity for first-time home buyers uh, or, buy, or investors looking for a bargain. So kind of next in line is we have what we, what we very, very broadly re refer to as mid-range condos. Okay, These are neighborhoods such as Victoria Park, Harpen River, and Point Seattle Heights. Now, when we talk about these different ranges, okay, we're talking about them as it relates to the condos. It's a whole different world out there when you're looking at single family homes and even when you're looking at some of the townhomes. So if you're thinking, if you have information on single family homes, please feel free to reach out and let us know. But folks, just kind of keep in mind, for purposes of this particular video, we're talking about condos and kind of the criteria that defines those condos. Now, the mid-range areas, they typically start around 300 to 325,000 and they can go up to, up to about 650. 50,000 okay now these are condos that are these are neighborhoods that typically have newer condos they may have low-rise buildings they may also have some high-rise buildings okay these are usually properties that are in very good position they've had recent updates maybe they've had some upgrades and they've even maybe even done a renovation maybe five to seven years ago so the renovation itself is still relatively recent and the difference between upgrades and updates and renovation is basically upgrades and updates are kind of like replacing the kitchen appliances maybe you're putting a new countertop on there renovation means you're going in and taking a look at the property itself uh, maybe you're upgrading the, the electrical panel maybe what you're doing is you're adding in some additional uh, plumbing maybe you're changing the plumbing from three eighths inch hopper plumbing to basically three quarter inch pvc plumbing to accommodate greater water pressure or more folks living there so there is a difference between updates upgrades and renovation the other thing that some of these mid-range condos are going to have is they're going to be a little bit more amenity rich maybe you have a little bit bigger pool maybe you have a clubhouse associated with it okay and maybe there's a, even a gym or an underground garage associated with those these condos again they're, they're usually in very very good position in very very good condition okay and, and they're usually pretty close to being if not already there kind of ready to move in basically bring your clothes bring your stuff and move on in and if you're looking for the ultimate luxury, you want to check out some of the neighborhoods, kind of like Harbor Beach and the Gulf Ocean Mile and Las Olas Isles. Now, these are typically high-rise buildings that have been built recently or have, been, have had major renovation recently. And they give you, they have intercoastal views or ocean views or ocean front. These are the ones that you hear about when folks want to sit there sipping their coffee in the morning and they're watching the sun come up over the Atlantic or they're watching the sun come up over the intercoastal, okay? And they even have some, some really, really extensive perks. Some of them even have private beaches that have been deeded into it but they have swimming pools fitness centers seven by 24 concierge they have a security service going on so they have things that are set up that basically you these are these are the same types of amenities that you'll f expect to find and you'll find in some very very high-end single-family neighborhoods where they, they, there's a, a heightened sense of security so um, and these prices range and you start they start anywhere between 650 and 675 they go up to well over a million dollars as a matter of fact there's actually a couple of condos that are listed right now in Fort Lauderdale area that are between 14 and 16 million dollars and, and I would say that those are the very definition of luxury and opulence but folks it's also important to note that these price ranges are, are general, okay? And they may vary depending upon the specific building, the location, the size, and, and the amenities. 
And I will say that there are a lot of buildings that have been going up extensive renovation to kind of get themselves a, into a more favorable or a, a more saleable condition. Now, it's also important to realize that the price of these condos, they're affected by factors such as the local real estate market, which we've all know, we've all talked about. Check out our latest video on the, the state of the market in Fort Lauderdale, February 2023, to get insight and updates on what's going on currently in the market. And you'll also talk about the overall demand for condos in the area. Again, it's market conditions. It's not something that's going to be set in stone. These things are fluid and you need to understand and understand that. This is one of the things that makes it all the more imperative that you work with recognized experts like my like my team and myself. We understand what's going on. We are in tune with the market conditions. If you have any questions, you should feel free to reach out. You should be encouraged to reach out to ask any questions that you have. Email us, text us, call us, DM us. I mean, heck, if you want to, go ahead and hit the Zoom link that in there and set up a time where we can chat for 40 to 45 minutes about any questions that you have about condos, specific questions about condos, or anything else that you have about the real estate market in here in Fort Lauderdale or the surrounding area. And folks, as I said before, the criteria for these can and usually do differ significantly from that of single family homes. Folks look at single family homes for much different reasons than they look at condos. And we're gonna go into some of the more reasons why folks are looking at condos and why condos have become such a popular housing option and home option down here in Fort Lauderdale. So we mentioned amenities briefly um, in regards to some kind of distinguishing you know, the different price points of the different areas, okay? And amenities are very, very significant. And for some folks, they are very, very important. They're absolutely critical to, to basically defining how they wanna live. And that's terrific. So you want to look at, make sure that you're looking at those amenities that are important to you. Okay, as we said before, and we'll continue to say it again, when you're looking at property, when you're looking to purchase property, you want to break them into three categories. There are things that you absolutely positively must have. These are deal breakers. These are things that if you can't find it, you know what, don't move, don't make the deal, don't do it. We are there to thoroughly and wholeheartedly endorse you on that. Then there are things that you basically, you know, you really want to have, but it's not something that's a deal breaker. These are things that are nice to have. An example for that would be that you want to have some type of security, but it doesn't need to be a security guard 7x24. Maybe it's a security, it's a swipe card to get into your building. Maybe it's something where you have somebody sitting at the front desk, at a front desk during after hours. Or maybe there's a partial coverage with somebody sitting at a front desk in there. Okay, so you absolutely positively have to have some type of security to make yourself, to make you feel better. But you know what, you're, you're open to a couple different options on that. The third thing are the things that are basically nice to have. Now, from the standpoint of distinguishing between those three, okay, absolutely positively must have, these are the things that you're willing to pay for. You know, the things that are nice that, that you need, that you really need, okay, from the standpoint of some type of security, you're willing to negotiate on those. The things that you want to have, those are nice, okay? You want to have a pool. It doesn't need to be an Olympic-sized pool with diving boards and everything else, okay? You want to have a nice area to lay out and relax, okay? So, you, so you, as long as you have that deck area where you can lay out, you want it to be somewhat secluded and somewhat private. So they have a fence around it. Maybe they have some bushes around there. Okay, these are the kind of the difference. But if, for example, you absolutely positively have to have an ocean view, okay, that's great. Okay, do you need to have an ocean view where you're on the beach? Or do you need to have an ocean view where you can look between two buildings? That's, a, that's kind of a different. That's gonna create two entirely different price points. For example, the third thing we talked about is affordability. We talked about kind of the different cutoff points um, as far as 100 to 300 to 350. 350 to 650 to 675, 650, 675 on up well over a million dollars. One of the nice, one of the great things about Fort Lauderdale is pretty much no matter what your budget is, okay, or even if you have a budget, then basically there, Fort Lauderdale has a condo or condos that are perfect for you, okay? They are, and the reason folks look at condos from the standpoint of affordability is very, very simple. In many, many cases, condos offer a much more affordable option as far as giving them all the things that they need to have, most of the things that they want to have, and quite a few of the things that are nice to have at a much more cost-effective price point or much more cost-effective option than, than a single family home. Okay, let's face it. I mean, every on single family homes, we use the, the number one example that's going on down here right now, homeowner's insurance, okay? If you're buying a single family home, okay, you're gonna be responsible for all the maintenance, you're gonna be responsible for all the repairs, 
and you're gonna be responsible for paying the, the entire bill for the homeowner's insurance. Now, it's no secret that Florida's been struggling with, with insurance companies and homeowner's insurance, okay? And I'm here to tell you basically the number one reason for that it's been struggling is because of the preponderance for fraud. If you have any more questions about that, I can talk about that for hours and hours, sometimes even days on end. Ask Suzanne, she'll tell you she's tired of hearing about it. Any questions about those specific things, please feel free to reach out. More than happy to talk your ear off about it, okay? But the difference between single family homes and condos and townhomes and villas to a lesser degree. But if you take a look at the at two opposite ends of the spectrum, single family home and condos is basically the cost for the insurance in a condo, much like much of the other maintenance costs, be that parking lot repair, be it painting, be it landscaping, that's all shared across everybody in the building or everybody in the association. Whereas if you have a single family home, you're bearing that cost all yourself. Now, for some folks, the security, the solitude, and the fact that they have their own place, their own home, they can do whatever they want to, that's paramount for them. Condos are probably not the best option for them. But for folks who are coming down here, maybe for an investment purposes, they want to come down, stay for a, a couple of months, stay for a couple of weeks, then rent it out the rest of the time, condos are going to be a very, very, very viable option for them. First time home buyers, not sure where you're going to be, not sure what you're going to do, and basically, but you know, you kind of know the general area you're going to be in. Condos are a much more viable option from a, from a price point, okay? The other thing is, is that like, as same thing before, if you decide that it's not what you want, you have an option. You can either sell or you can turn around and you can rent it out. The rental market down here is very, very, very strong. And the closer you are to some of the major amenities, the beach, the golf courses, the casinos, the better, the, the better, the higher the probability that you're gonna be able to rent your property out and the higher the, the higher the rental you're gonna you're gonna get for it. Okay, now as it stands right now, there's about 660 condos available in, in the Fort Lauderdale general area. Okay. And those condos range anywhere from about $109,000, $110,000, as I said, and up to, as I said before, upwards of $16 million. Okay. So there truly is something for everybody from an amenity perspective, from a size perspective, and also from a price points perspective. So folks, so whether you're looking to call Fort Lauderdale home, you're looking for an investment opportunity, you're looking for a vacation getaway, okay, or a retirement destination, okay, this city truly has it all. It has something for everyone as far as location, amenities and affordability. I know that I'm beating a drum on this one. I said it, we said it, everybody. Everybody else who does videos says the same thing, okay? The, without a doubt, the number one draw to Fort Lauderdale area is the weather, okay? Even in the wintertime, okay, when it dips down into the 60s, okay, we gotta bring out, we have to bring out a little windbreakers, okay? It's still better than the weather that's in over 90% of the United States. As a matter of fact, I was talking to some friends earlier today and who live in Sonoma. One of them lives in Sonoma and the other one lives out in, in LA County, okay? Now, my friend that lives in Sonoma, over the weekend, she got snow. Today, she's dealing with hail, okay? It's not supposed to snow and hail in Sonoma, at least not from what we understand, okay? And then what's going on in, in LA, out in, in Southern California, Okay, depending upon what altitude you're at and kind of where you're at, okay, it's either major, major rainstorms, major, major mudstorms, mudslides, or if you're unlucky enough to be stuck in the San Bernardino Valley, okay, then basically you're socked in by a massive, massive snowstorm. Folks, we don't have those problems. We don't have those issues down here in Fort Lauderdale. A couple of months out of the year, we may have a, uh, you know, a minor threat of a hurricane coming through, but I'll tell you, I'll take that minor threat of a hurricane over getting snowed on, getting rained on consistently and having mud slide down and taking my house off the side of the hill. I'll take that, you know, every day of the week, three times on Saturday and five times on Sunday. So the weather is certainly a very, very big call, a very, very big draw for folks coming down here to Fort Lauderdale. Now, how does that relate to condos? It's very, very simple. Those con condos are going to give you a much better price point if you're budget on, from a budget consciousness perspective of being able to be close to the amenities that we use, that we are here down here trying to experience with all the nice weather. You're going to find the price of an oceanfront condo a lot cheaper than that, both purchase price point perspective and from an ongoing cost perspective than you are going to find a single family home on the beach. Plus, you're also going to find a lot more options and a lot more variety of oceanfront condos, waterfront condos, and beachfront condos than you will with single family homes. So that you can go ahead and you can take advantage of the beautiful weather that we have down here. Now, 
As many of you have heard to say before, the last time I read, I read that we have over 300 days of sun every year. Now folks, that's over 3,000 hours of sun. Basically, there's there's no reason for you to not get enough sunlight or not get enough sunshine, okay? If you want it, okay? It's just the weather is there for you and it's there for, it's yours for the taking. The other thing about condos that we've come to find out is that basically kind of built into everything that we talk about as far as the maintenance fees and you know whether you have to pay for your roof or you have to pay for this and pay for that is kind of the convenience of the whole thing. Okay. Folks, I've lived in homes, I've lived in houses, okay? And who knows, I may ultimately turn around and live in another house, okay? But as it stands right now, based upon what Suzanne and I wanna do and how we wanna live our lives, it's much more convenient for us to live in a condo than it is for me to have to worry about cutting my grass and painting my house and fixing my roof and repairing my driveway, okay? And every time something breaks down, I either gotta call the repairman, I gotta call the insurance company, or I gotta call both. So just from a convenience perspective, right now for a lot of, and we're no different than a lot of other folks, living in a condo for us gives us the convenience of being able to have a lot of things already taken care of just by virtue of you know paying your monthly fee. And it gives us the opportunity to go out and kind of experience some of the things that we really wanted to be able to experience coming down here. Not the least of which is the aforementioned weather. The other thing to do is, you know, and kind of in talking with convenience and talking with weather, okay, is that if you have more time to do the things that you want to do and you have more time to be able to experience amenities and whatnot, you're going to realize that Fort Lauderdale and the Fort Lauderdale area has a plethora of things to do, okay? And, and there are a lot of things that folks enjoy doing, okay? Some of them are condo specific, okay? And some of them are just generic to being close to certain amenities, certain areas like the beach or the golf courses or the casinos or all three. But there are plenty of opportunities as I said, you have a lot more opportunities to find a condo closer to the beach or on the beach in a 10, 12, 15, 16, 20, 25 story condo than you do in one or two single family homes that have been shoehorned in there, okay? The other thing is, is that, um, you know, it just, you have the ability to go out and just leverage a lot more things to do, okay? The other thing is, is that with more free time in your hands, you get to take advantage of some of the other benefits down here, cultural activities, okay? Fort Lauderdale has a plethora of art galleries, museums, performance venues. You can, if there's really, it's almost unlimited as far as the things that you can do and see in Fort Lauderdale and the Fort Lauderdale area. Because remember, from a location perspective, you're also very, very close to Miami. You're very, very close to Boca and you're very, very close to West Palm. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do if you just want if just in and around the Fort Lauderdale area. Now, from the standpoint of a self-professed wannabe foodie, the next benefit is very, very near and dear to my heart. It's dining, okay? And it's very, very seldom have I been anywhere that has the variety of dining options and dining experiences that Fort Lauderdale and the Fort Lauderdale area has. I mean, just walk down Las Olas Boulevard and it's like walking down Restaurant Row. Everything from steakhouses to taco houses to wonderful Chinese food to wonderful Italian restaurants to bistros to any basic anything you want. Go further out, go to one of my favorite places, Morton's, go hit the Palm, go hit Roos Chris. Go down and a little further up the road, go hit Shooter's Waterfront for steaks and seafood. Go down to Gigi's on the waterfront. Okay, awesome place to go. Go down to JBW, JWB's down in, the, in down near Hollywood in the Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. Incredible steakhouse. I, I guarantee you'll love it. I pretty much guarantee that you'll love everything that comes out of there. So there's a huge, huge number of options as far as dining and entertainment. Okay, and one of the things that you'll see if you come down here, pretty much 7 by 24, 365. If you head down to Fort Lauderdale Beach, there is always something going on. Whether you're an old timer like me that goes to the elbow room and hangs out and listens to classic rock, or you want to head up the road to the, the Mediterranean, or you want to go further up the road and go to all of the different uh, types of bars and restaurants that are up there, there's always something to do down there. There's all kinds of fun things to do. Okay, and there's all kinds of nightlife, whether it's down in Fort Lauderdale, whether you go down to some of the venues down towards Hollywood, where you can stand on the on the broadwalk and listen to concerts going on, or you can head a little north at the Lauderdale by the sea, same thing that goes on. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm not a huge shopper, okay, but in deference to those that are, okay, again, we talked about Los Olas Boulevard from being from a restaurant perspective, Perspective. The only thing that they're more of on Las Olas Boulevard than restaurant are shops, okay? So you can pretty much get anything that you want to find down there. If for some reason you can't find it, it's a very, very short trip out to down to Aventura, where the huge mall is down there. It's a very, very short trip out to Sawgrass Mills, where it's a, it's a multi, multi, huge mall 
huge mall out there. Now, kind of a funny story about Sawgrass Mills. The first time Susan and I went there, we couldn't figure out why it is that every store, regardless of what they were selling, whether they were selling perfume, clothing, or whatever, they had suitcases for sale out front. So I went up and actually asked somebody, I said, so what's the deal with all these suitcases? Well, they said basically that so many people come in from all over the world to go shopping here, that basically what they'll do is they'll fly in from South America, Central America, from Europe, from Asia, from Canada, from everywhere, even from other states in the in the Union, okay? And they won't bring any suitcases with them. And they'll go out and they'll buy suitcases, and they'll fill everything up and they'll take it back with them. So especially areas, parts of the, of the world that don't have the, the, the same amount, you know, the same breadth of clothing and products that we have here. Okay? There are a lot of folks that come in from areas that, does, that do not have the same variety, that not even have much of a variety at all. And they just go hog wild shopping here and they fill those suitcases up and they roll on down to the airport and they jump on the airplane they go back home and you know wow it's just basically all of their friends are, are aghast at all this all the great stuff that they got this happens a lot go to aventura go to sawgrass mills mall go check it out it's amazing it's actually it's amazing that the shopping options that are down that are available down here again folks it's the weather okay it's, it's conducive to being outdoor there are all kinds of outdoor things that are going on down here one of the things that we're gearing up for now is the upcoming St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's on a Friday, so it'll be terrific. It'll start early, you know, mid-morning. We'll start we'll start at the very, very northeast end, I'm sorry, northwest end of Las Olas Boulevard and walk all the way down there. Okay, we'll be part of it. We'll be there waving and everything else and drinking our green beer. So, but there are all kinds of things that are going on outside. Earlier last month, we went to the Italian festival. There's a Greek festival coming up. There's a Romanian festival coming up. There's an African-American festival that are coming up. There's all kinds of things that are going on outside. There is the largest boat show in this hemisphere in Fort Lauderdale in October. The boats, the, the people that come from all over the world to check this, and the boats that are, they start leaving in July and August from wherever they are so they can be here. We have a similar show going down in Miami. It's not quite as large. It's gaining ground really, really quick. In February, the Miami International Boat Show, it's the very same thing. A lot of things going on outside, a lot of things to do outside. As you said, you know, there's all kinds of things happening. There's air shows, there's a sea show, there's the Winterfest Boat Show. We've talked about this before. It's one of the largest boat, continuous boat shows that are going on. It starts up north, up in Pompano Beach, and runs down the intercoastal waterway. Okay, and it, I mean, it's just a great thing to do. From our perspective, it's one of the things that kind of kicks off the holiday season, because folks, folks go all out decorating their boats, and they come down and they take a lot of pride in it, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to watch. Just kind of stand around, make an evening of it just sit down and relax and watch everybody and you get to meet new people and uh, it's just it's just it's absolutely wonderful it's some one of those things that if you get down here during the holidays it's a not to be missed occurrence so in addition to the things that the outside like the, the places to go and the places to eat and shopping and stuff like that okay there are a lot of there's a lot of parkland a lot of wildlife wildland available down for, for people to visit down here in, in Fort Lauderdale Broward County has a very very robust parks and recreation uh, department and they have things that are going on all over the place I mean there's a place like the huge Taylor Birch State Park. It's a 180 acre park that features, it's almost, think of it as the way South Florida looked like a hundred years ago before everything else came in. Huge mangrove swamps. It's, it's a beach, it's a variety of all kinds of recreational activities, but it's all done with a, um, with the mind on and a focus on kind of keeping things pristine and keeping things the way that they used to be. Holiday Park, one of our favorite parks, is located in Victoria Park. One of the benefits of looking at property at condos in Victoria Park is that you get a chance to go, you're right there at Holiday Park. Holiday Park is home to one of the best dog parks in the Fort Lauderdale area, and it's free. Okay, Buford loves going to the dog park. It's home to the Chrissy Everett Lloyd Tennis Center. Chrissy Everett grew up here in Fort Lauderdale in Victoria Park. She's a wonderful tennis center that's been churning out all kinds of tennis talent for generations. There's Slider Park that basically offers a variety of all kinds of recreational activities. It has fishing, hiking, you can do picnicking, big playground for the kids, okay? And it too has a dog park, okay? And just outside of Fort Lauderdale proper, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up, is Butterfly Park. Folks, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Just outside of Fort Lauderdale proper in Coconut Creek is Butterfly World. It's the largest collection, indoor collection of butterflies in the world. There's over uh, 2 million butterflies in there at last count, okay? And not only is it a very, very calm and very, very serene and peaceful place to go, it also smells wonderful because all the things that are going down there from the pollination. And I can tell you that every time that we've been over there, Suzanne and I go over there, the kids are completely enthralled. If you want something that's going to keep your kids occupied 
for all day and they want to, and a place that they want you to take them back time and time and time again, check out Butterfly World. You got to go check that out. The other area that's kind of, it's, it's kind of a secret, no pun intended, is basically Secret Woods Nature Center. Okay. It's a nature preserve as, as opposed to being like a kind of like a park with playgrounds and stuff like that. It's basically a, a preserve. So that has a wide variety of habitats. It's like rocklands, mangrove swaps, swamps. It has cypress wetlands, it has tr hiking trails. It also is a great educational program for kids to participate in too. It's something, again, much like Butterfly World, it's something that just enthralls the kids. Gives them an opportunity to learn, get some, maybe get some, you know, away from the beach for a little while when they get, when they're tired of being at the beach. A little education in Tim kind of gets everything going on. And I'm telling you, the kids love it. They absolutely love it. Now, one of our favorite places, which is just a little bit south, it's still in Fort Lauderdale, just a little bit south, going down through the Port Everglades uh, cruise ship port is the Ann Cold Nature Center. It, this has all kinds of great stuff in there. It's a nice, it's a huge building that has all kinds of things that are going on. And they actually have three-dimensional displays of all these different things that are that you, that you see within that particular area. It also has an incredible walkway around so that you get an opportunity to go back out and see all the stuff that's going on. You get a chance to see all of the things that are of interest in an environment that's a beach environment on the intercoastal waterway. Not to be missed, it's wonderful and in some cases, when the heat gets up there in the middle of the summertime, Suzanne and I will go down there and take a little walk. Okay, when you get into the area where the shade comes down, the temperature drops 10 to 15 degrees. It's noticeable, it's palatable. Now, one of Suzanne's favorite places, and I've only been there once, but she's been there a number, a number of times, is the Stranahan House Museum. It's basically, a mu it's a museum that's kind of, it's a, it's a house that was built by a very famous family that kind of helped settle Fort Lauderdale. But it basically talks about, it, it shows, kind of shows the history of the settlement of Fort Lauderdale itself, okay? It's it's also there's artifacts in there. There's all kinds of educational programs in there. All kinds of cool things that are that are going in there. As I said, I've only been there once, and I was and I was very, very, very interested in it. I just haven't had an opportunity to get back there again. I would encourage you to do that. In fact, I'm going to take this as a, as a uh, note to self to go ahead and get back there again. So we talked about the price, the affordability. We've talked about the amenities that come with it. We've talked about the things to do. We've talked about places to go. And we've even talked about some of the people to see. But one of the things that we need that I think bears basically talking about kind of standing on its own, okay, is one of the key differences between condos and single family homes, okay, is a low maintenance. Basically, in a condo, you're paying a maintenance fee every month. That's what they call it. They call it an association fee. They call it a management fee. They call it a maintenance fee. It's all of those things together. Included in there is somebody who's going to be painting, going to be cleaning things, the outside area. They're going to be painting every couple of years. They're going to be making sure the roof is taken care of, making sure the parking lot's taken care of. When the holidays come around, they're going to take care of the landscaping and the holidays in there. If there's a pool or a clubhouse, they're going to maintain keep maintain it, keep it clean so that you can use it. Basically, all the only maintenance that you're going to have is maintenance inside your particular property. So basically, somebody else is taking care of everything outside. No more cutting the grass, no more painting the house no more fixing the roof no more patching the driveway those kind of things so it's basically it that's and that's something that for a lot of folks okay is very very important okay? now the other thing is is that one of the things that you're going to that you're going to hear about Fort Lauderdale is I really can't overstate this okay and it's kind of the purpose it's kind of the purpose of us doing these videos okay is that you know folks we're realtors okay and we do this for a living and we love it we absolutely positively love it but the only thing that we like doing more than these videos and if you've seen them you'll see how much fun we have doing these videos the only thing that we really like more than doing these videos is helping people okay now the reason that we do that is because we are convinced that Fort Lauderdale is a very, very strong real estate market. Folks, 30 to 33 million people come here every year. Some folks come here for a day or two. Some folks come here for a week or two. Some folks come here for a month or two or three, okay? And regardless of how long you're here, you need a place to stay. You're either going to rent a hotel room, you're going to do Airbnb, you're gonna do VRBO, you're gonna rent something from somebody else long-term. There is a very, very strong real estate market here. Prices, the average price of homes in Fort Lauderdale is up 7% over last year. The average price of homes over the past three years has gone up 44%. I don't know about you guys, but that tells me that's a very, very strong real estate market. The other thing is, is that um, for the longest time, 
you know, folks would talk about about Fort Lauderdale as kind of the place to go. It's a retirement place, okay? And everybody kind of poo-pooed it. And even Fort Lauderdale for a while, they were kind of shying away from that. But I'm telling you, okay, honestly, this is a great place to retire. I mean, who wouldn't want to retire here? The weather's great. The, the overall cost of living is actually relatively low because Florida doesn't charge a state income tax. So your retirement income goes a lot farther because you're not giving a portion of it to the state. Okay. There's all kinds of options as far as single family homes, villas, townhomes, and especially condos as we talked about today. And with its the, with the warm beaches and the active community, okay, it's become a very, very popular spot for retirees. That and the fact that there's actually legislation that piggy banks on the Americans with Disability Act is that there's legislation here in Florida that makes sure that folks over 55 or over 62 are not discriminated against. So there are options available for folks who want to be with other folks that have similar likes. So in addition to the condos that we've talked about, there are condos that fall into an over 55 uh, classification where basically either you need to be over 55, you need to, uh, either the purchaser or one of the residents or all the residents need to be over 55. If you want information about that, we can, again, that's one of those videos that we've already done. That's a topic that I can go on for hours about because I'm over 55. Reach out, let us know. Be happy to tell you all, tell you, answer any questions that you have. There are a lot of great options down here and there are a lot of great retirement areas down here. And there's a whole cottage industry around making sure that folks who come down here to retire have the op have whatever they need. There is a tremendous amount of medical care that's avail available down here. A lot of financial services. There's a lot of a lot a lot of the shops and a lot of the, ser the services, personal services, are there geared around helping folks who are coming down to retire. So, folks, whether you're looking for an affordable condo, a mid-range condo, uh, or a luxury condo, okay, that coupled with the active and diverse communities down here and a, and a wide range of people, backgrounds and different likes and everything else, it creates a really vibrant and really dynamic environment that's very very enjoyable to most folks. Okay, you can get, engage in a variety of activities. So, folks. Come on down and discover why so many people are calling Fort Lauderdale home.